Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and boy do I have a treat for everyone today. We're taking a look at the Beast of the Mesozoic Tyrannosaur series 118 and 135 scale Tyrannosaurus Rex. These are the gray unpainted versions which is meant for collectors that are handy with a paintbrush to customize into their own creations. Now I just need to take a moment and just give a huge huge thank you to david silver for sending me these early production samples seriously david I, I don't think i could thank you enough i couldn't thank you enough uh in our messages i lent david my hammond collection rex and i also sent him the uh, resaurus t-rex for comparison with these figures you know he asked me to do it he's always been very kind to this channel sending me early figures uh to review so everyone can take a look at them before they actually start shipping and he offered to send me these and uh seriously i am just blown away by your generosity david um these things are just absolutely beautiful they've been here for like a couple hours already and i just about to work myself up and to take them out of the packaging because they're absolutely massive and beautiful and these are the unpainted versions i can't wait to get my painted versions and these figures are just absolutely massive and beautiful so from the bottom of my heart david thank you now, good news for those of you that did pre-order these gray versions of the T-Rex. They should be shipping relatively soon from Creative Beast Studios. Uh, David's been absolutely excellent with the Kickstarter updates of every step of the way of all his projects that he's been doing lately. That's why I love supporting this series. He is just so in-depth and shows you every step of the way of how these figures become concepts to reality. And it's been a pleasure to follow over all these years. Now these two figures are still available for pre-order. The 118 scale Rex retails for $200 and the 135 scale retails for $65. And like I said earlier, they should be shipping around the July, August time frame. So yeah, um, let's jump into this review. I am like still like dumbfounded. I'm gonna sound really uh, giddy and overexcited why I do this review because I'm still like shocked that I actually have these figures in hand. It's been a very highly anticipated series for me and these are just the unpainted versions uh i backed everything in the series uh except for the standard 135 scale rex and i think it's the guan long it's the one six scale figure if i got it wrong please don't rip me the shreds in the comments because uh, i'm just holding out hope uh for that one six scale figure to eventually get made into a 118 scale figure like david's doing with some of the raptor figures but yeah, um, yeah, my wife's probably going to kill me because I have no clue where I'm going to put all these uh, figures. Uh, I already have the limited edition and the regular version of the 118 scale Rex pre-ordered and the uh, Walking with Dinosaur version. And knowing me, because I hate saving money and just absolutely despise my wallet, I will probably get the uh, Cyberzoic version of this T-Rex uh, when that eventually comes around. So yeah, I have no clue where I'm gonna put all this stuff. And I definitely have to dig into my paints and paint both these figures up. I have a couple ideas for these two. And one of them is painfully obvious, uh, you know, with the latest documentary that released a couple months ago. So enough of me just fawning over these figures. Let's just jump to this review and go over the packaging first so I can crack these things open and see what's going on inside these boxes. So this is the 135 scale Grey Rex. You have a picture of the Rex right here. I have a nice window box with all the fun accessories that come in here. We have uh, multiple legs, feet, a base. The tail is unattached. Uh, spinning around the side, you get another view of the Grey Rex. And then on the back of the box, we have some information about t-rex and shows all the accessories uh lined up uh, you know some simply required paint not included oh man i am i haven't painted you know when i first started this channel i used to do a lot of customs and i just kind of like you know ran out of time you know keep up reviews and you know you know just life jobs wife kid and all that stuff but uh, yeah, I, I, I am looking forward uh, greatly to painting these figures. And next up, oh my God, the box on the 118 scale is just absolutely massive. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta adjust my camera for this because the box uh, absolutely puts the trike and Taurosaurus box to shame. And let's get my stupid studio lights so it's not glaring all over the window box. This box is just <laughs> insane. I'm just still, like I said, I'm just dumbfounded that I'm 
hold these figures right now. So this is the 118 scale uh, Grey Rex. Here's the Grey Rex on the side. You, have, you know, you can see all the accessories in that beautiful, beautiful window box, side of the box, and then turn it around to the back. It's pretty much exactly the same as the 135 scale, except this one is done in blue. So enough about the packaging. I need to bust these open and really mess around with these before we jump into this review. Now before we throw these figures up on the turntable, the tails do need to be attached to the bodies. You just need to either heat this part up with a hair dryer or run it for a couple minutes underneath very hot water. Once you have that softened up just a little bit, you just have to work it over this ball joint on the tail. It takes a little bit of work and then once you feel it snap in, it is into place and whew! Wow, that one burnt me out, but yeah, it's a little work to get it on the 118 scale Rex, but once it's in there, uh, it's a very, very secure fit. All right, let's start with this 360 degree view of these two figures. As you can see, the 118 scale is just an absolute massive figure that is pushing my studio beyond its limits. And let me tell you, unboxing the 118 scale Rex is definitely a once in a lifetime experience there's just so much in the package and you got the base multiple legs and feet it's just such a massive figure uh us collectors aren't used to uh articulated dinosaur figures uh this big and it's just so such an incredible figure just to have in hand like i i've been playing around with these things for a couple hours before i did this turntable uh section of the review and these things are just an absolute work of art. David put a ton of work into these. And, you know, first impressions, uh, the detail, fit and finish uh, feels a little bit better than the Ceratopsian series. You know, I absolutely love the Ceratopsian series. I think it's one of the best dinosaur lines uh, ever produced. And these feel slightly better in quality. The joints are nice and tight on these figures. Uh, you can see you can get them in some pretty interesting poses with the uh, included bases and these things are going to look absolutely incredible when the painted versions uh, come out in a couple more months i'm so looking forward to that dino riders one you know growing up uh in the era when dino riders came out what a disappointment it was getting the original dino riders toy just open up it's just this gray t-rex and you didn't get that beautiful yellow and gr yellow and green color scheme and david is just making uh, a childhood uh dream come true with that limited edition version um you know messing around with the articulation on these figures i will say i'm having a much better time playing around with the 135 scale that's because it's a smaller figure uh the articulation is basically exactly the same between both figures i think the only difference is on the 135 you don't get uh, wrist articulation which you're not even going to notice you don't have because there's so many joints uh, between both these figures uh, the 118 scale is definitely uh, it's definitely a handful to try to get the pose around it's just a really really heavy figure uh, I think it weighs like 300 and something grams so it is definitely a big boy of a figure to handle and pose around but a little bit of work and balance you can see you can get these figures nicely displayed on their bases and now time for some measurements. Let's start with the 135 scale. This figure is 14 and a half inches long or just under 37 centimeters. It's just over five inches tall or almost 13 centimeters. That's just, that will change depending on how you have the figure uh, pose the height. For the 118 scale, this beast is a whopping eight, 28 inches long or just over 71 centimeters and just about nine and a half inches tall or just over 24 centimeters so t-rex in real life was just over 40 feet long or about 12 and a half meters so that with those measurements that'll put the 118 scale right at 118 scale like it should be and the same also goes for the 135 scale so both these figures are exactly in the scale range that they are advertised at all right, let's first take a closer look at the 135 scale Rex. You know, these should be pre pretty quick. We're just looking over at details. Uh, then I'll go over articulation at the end. You know, there's no color on here, so we don't have to waste time talking about all the different shades and stuff. So let's take a look at that beautiful head skull. Nice, accurate looking T-Rex head. Uh, you know, for T-Rex being the most popular dinosaur of all time, a lot of the figures on the market are not accurate looking. They always look like a weird hybrid uh, of the Jurassic Park design. So David did pay special attention when sculpting these figures just absolutely love the head sculpt look at that binocular vision you see all these large scales at the tip of the snout you know it's theorized the t-rex has had very very sensitive snouts for uh, communicating 
with each other. Uh, no, this is a lip figure. Uh, they did not go the lipless route like PNSO is notorious for. And look how nice and flush the jaws close on this figure. That was a big thing David wanted to get done. Uh, they weren't closed and flush, and the uh, factory went back and retooled the mold so you could get a nice, tight close on these jaws. I think it looks absolutely great. And then going on the underside, you can see some uh, folds and wrinkles. Uh, for this little dual lap going on right here. You can see the inner canal is nicely sculpted in. Some more folds and wrinkles on the top of the head. The detail on all both these figures is just absolutely astounding. And going down to the neck, you can see some more folds and wrinkles. A lot of fine, fine scale detail. All the places, uh, the scales are nice and proportionate looking. They are not oversized at all. More folds and wrinkles uh, on the torso. The Forelimbs are nice and very puny, but the uh, hand claws are nicely shot. Very, very well molded. And let's take a look at the underside. Some more f very, very fine scale detail. You get some larger ones uh, when you get to the uh, underside of the pelvic region. And then going down to the thigh, some more folds and wrinkles. A lot of nice clear muscle definition on the hind legs. The uh, hind feet are also nicely sculpted. Toe claws are nicely done. And then going up to the back, you can see a nice barrel chested uh, body on this figure nice wide hip very very thick tail base some more of folds and wrinkles and all those very very fine scale details going all the way down to the tip of the tail so yes a very very nicely sculpted figure and let's do articulation really quick and first up is the mouth we ever showed that it can close completely flush let's get the camera to refocus in on that that is the widest the mouth can open and I completely forgot we did not go over the mouth details uh, earlier so let's do that now so looking inside the mouth you can see lots of nice details and you can see the nasal patches is uh, sculpted in the gums are nicely sculpted the teeth are nicely set in the gums you only see like them poking out just a little bit kind of like a monitor lizard same thing for the teeth in the lower jaw and right back here you can see a tongue. Uh, I try to see if it's articulated and end up popping it uh, out of the socket and push it back in. Uh, the tongue on the 118 scale is definitely articulated and works much better. Maybe I'm just doing something wrong. Sometimes I'm just a little bit uh, heavy handed with these figures. And getting back to that articulation, let's close the mouth back up. The head can move down a little bit and it can move up a little bit you do have this rubber cover right here so when you get the head back in the position it is free floating it actually says it in the directions you do you do have to uh re reline this section up and looking at it from the front the head can move to the side pretty well and in tandem with this back neck joint right here you do get some nice movement now the one thing i don't like about this figure i don't like this neck cover especially when you're articulating the head side to side it just looks like the t-rex is wearing a hoodie i you know david is a master action figure maker and i'm just a moron with a camera but this is just my critique on this so just hear me out i wish that this uh neck cover was just cut right here like we didn't have this part like this was just molded and it just would look better in my eyes uh when you're articulating it like i said just i don't know it just gets in the way of the sculpt when you're just moving the figure around and i think without this i think you could have gotten some better up and down movement uh on that neck joint but that's me like i said david makes these figures for a living and i'm just an idiot with a camera so that's just my major critique uh with the design of these figures is just this this cover on the neck and now going down to those puny, puny forearms. They are on a hinge. They can swing out. They can go up and down. They can move forwards and they can move backwards. You do have a hinge at the elbow so you can get about 90 degrees. Uh, the hinge on these arms is incredibly tiny. So when you get these figures in, let's see if my camera, there we go. Uh, you get these figures and just be very, very careful with the forearm on this Rex. I can see someone being very rough with it. It could easily, easily break. Uh, definitely out of the packaging, it was uh, very smooth. Now, when the painted versions come in, that might be a different story. You might need to heat that up with a hair dryer. So if any of the joints are giving you trouble on these figures, heat them up with a hair dryer, soften them up a little bit. Don't force them. Uh, these are expensive figures. You don't want to be breaking them. Uh, the, out of the box, I just had to use the hair dryer just a little bit on a couple of the... Uh, the knee joints on some of the articulated uh, legs that came with on that had no problems with this thing. So now going to the torso, you do get some side to side movement 
with the torso and just a little bit of up and down not as much movement uh, as the ceratopsians but it will suffice going down to the hind legs so you can get some nice forwards and backwards oh my god backwards movement i think i just pushed that just a little bit too hard but if you want to see how the leg works on here that joint is incredibly incredibly tight let's pop that back in like i said i am a little heavy-handed with these figures sometimes so let's go around to this side so we can move the leg uh back about that far i think before i put enough pressure to pop the joint off but as you see i did not break the joint can easily pop back in now this leg right here this is the solid leg the only articulation you get is at the knee right here and it is very very tight because these are the main support uh for the legs on this figure there we go very very tight and clicky joints on these uh solid legs and then going down to the tail you get some nice downwards and upwards movement it is jointed in a couple different spots you get more side to side up and down up and down and side to side and this tip right here is flexible rubber now you do get a bunch of accessories uh with the t-rex and you can see i do have the solid legs on this version and it can stand just fine without the base but you do get two sets of articulated legs if you want to swap them out and i'll just put the legs right here i don't want to keep going back and forth in this mess uh popping everything in and out but here is one of the articulated legs you do get some nice movement at the ankle up and down and side to side and then over here near the calf up and down you do get some rotation and over here this is the knee joint articulate uh knee joint and it is very very tight it moves much better when it's in the uh the thigh and then you do get a couple sets of feet here is the running foot nicely nicely sculpted even the underside of the feet has some nice scale detail and this is the uh sculpt of the foot that's supposed to be lifting off the ground so you can get some different poses by swapping out the feet on the figures and here is the base you do have these two steel pegs to plug the uh, solid legs into the articulated legs do not have uh, peg holes so you have to use those if you want it to stand on the base and uh, I have to say I had a much better time posing the 135 scale versus the 118 scale the 118 scale is just a really really big figure and it's very heavy uh, I just had a much nicer time uh, posing the 135 scale and I was able to get some better uh, more dynamic poses because it's just a lighter figure and i could get you know standing on one leg and it could actually stand with the articulated legs without the base it's just you just don't have all that white that weight putting pressure on the joint so i definitely had a much better time playing around with this one versus the 118 scale and now let's move on to the big boy the 118 scale the details are gonna be much easier to see on this figure obviously because it's a hell of a lot larger uh than the 135 so let's take a look at the head in profile you know the figures are basically identical really the only difference is just like one point of articulation and just the size of them but you can see all those large scales along the snout you can see the nose and the ear canal nicely sculpted you can see all these small scales in the orbital fenestra some nice folds and wrinkles in the orbit you can see the eyes sculpted in you got the uh, crest above the eyes nicely sculpted and all those bony ridges down the snout are nicely nicely sculpted i can't wait to see a painted uh, version of this thing in my hands. It's just absolutely absolutely beautiful looking and then going down to lower joint because some really nice fine scales a lot of variation in scales um, You can see the David took a lot of time Sculpting this figure and then opening up the mouth. You can see all the different size teeth Inside the mouth and let's it's just such a big figure to maneuver like this thing weighs so much i think uh david weighed it weighs like like 310 or 320 grams it, it, it's a big boy you can see the nasal passage sculpted in the back right here you get some more uh details on the gums it's much better on the larger version than it is on the 135 scale and then inside the mouth right here my light is not picking up but let's get my finger in it you can see you do have an articulated tongue there we go uh, it works much better than it does in the 135. Like I said, I don't know if the 135's tongue is supposed to be articulated. Uh, like I said, when I was fiddling around with it, I just popped out of its mouth and went flying it across the room. And then going down to the neck, some more of those really, really fine 
scale details all over the neck at the top of the head and let's look at the head from the top because i don't think i showed this for you with the 135 there's some nice uh scales on top of the head you got that nice narrow uh snout for that binocular vision i'd show it from the front but this thing is so big it's gonna hit the back of my studio and then it hangs off uh the edge and my light doesn't hit it it just looks absolutely absolutely terrible and then turn over the underside get some more of those folds around this like dewlap right here and then going down to the very tiny arms you can see the hand claws are sculpted with nice sharp uh fingernails and then going down to the body really nice the, the figure is beautiful to touch a lot of nice texture in you could feel uh all the folds and wrinkles and all the fine scale details just a very very detailed figure and then looking at it from the bottom you can see some more that nice scale detail uh scales get larger around the hip region and then going to the legs very thick powerful looking legs some more folds and wrinkles very bulging calf muscle the feet are nicely done and looking at them from the back you can see the dew claw underside of the feet does have some nice scales on it what is that oh that's poster tack i use that on my studio uh, for photography to keep stubborn figures uh standing uh and then going down to the tail you can see more folds and wrinkles nice thick tail base it goes all the way all the way down to the tip of the tail so yeah this thing is an absolute beast and it is an absolute workout uh to maneuver around the studio for this review like i said this thing just weighs a lot now for articulation that's the farthest the mouth can open can close completely flush it looks great closed i just love how nice and clean uh and satisfying that sounds when it uh closes you do have this joint right here you can get a little upwards movement with the head and a little bit of downwards movement this neck piece is free floating so you will need to line it back up so it doesn't break up the sculpt of the head and then from the side right here let's pull my camera back this thing is just going to be an absolute pleasure to uh pose around the studio you should get some side to side movement on both those joints and like i same thing same issue i have with the uh 135 i just don't like this neck cover this looks like the t-rex is wearing a hoodie it would just be better in my eyes if it was just covering that much and the rest of the head was sculpted but that's like my only critique uh with the figure uh going down to the uh front limbs you do get some nice forwards and back movement and they do swing out you do get a nice bend at the elbow and they do have rotation at the elbow and with this one you didn't get this on the 135 you do have wrist articulation on those and the joints on these are very very tiny so please be very very careful with them uh they're definitely very very small hinge joints and then zooming back out you do have this torso piece you get some upwards and downwards movement and look at it from the side you can get some nice side to side movement with it you just gotta you know really work it it's a very it's a flexible rubber piece and you know this is a new figure so everything's pretty tight on it if everything anything's tight just use a hair dryer to work those joints and get them nice and loose and then going down to the hind legs they can move forwards that far and they can move backwards a little bit i'm gonna try hinging that joint out i don't want to pop it off like i did with the uh 135 i'm getting winded handle this this thing that's how big and heavy it is uh for the knee joint you can get a nice bend on on the knee this is the uh, solid foot the only articulation is on the knee right here but we'll go into the other feet later on and as you can see during the whole review uh the stability with these uh solid feet is really really well you don't have to worry about the figure uh falling over if you don't want to use the base and then going down to the tail you get some nice up and down and side to side movement with that joint another joint right here same exact uh articulation and then for the tail let's move the camera down same thing side to side up and down and it is rubber so you do get some nice flexibility at the tip of the tail between both figures the only main difference is is the base that comes with the 118 scale it's very similar 
uh, to the 135. You, know, you can see the rock sculpted in, a lot of nice fine texture in. It's probably going to look awesome when it's painted. You have two very, very thick uh, metal rods for these uh, legs to plug into. And when you look at the underside of this, of this base, it actually can split into two separate pieces. All you need to do is remove this H clip and don't lose it or you won't be able to reattach your base and then this gives you two separate bases to increase your display options with the figure and next up here is the articulated leg i didn't show you how to remove the leg uh on the 135 i wanted to save it for the 118 scale all you need to do is just twist the leg and it will pop out of the joint relatively easily and all you need to do is just push this back into the peg it's so hard to hold it when i'm sitting in my chair to keep this thing in the frame and that's how you get the articulated leg into the rex now you know i was messing around with the articulation on here and you know it can stand a little bit if you have uh, the center of the gravity going more towards the back like the tail is basically uh touching the ground on this figure let me just move my camera back so you can see it so yes you can use uh, the jointed legs it actually specifically says it in the instructions not to do it too long because especially with this figure it's so heavy it's gonna wear the joints out but you can pull it off and let's just take a closer look at some of the alternate feet here is the running foot some nice details on that you have some nice details on the bottom and here is the lifting foot another nicely nicely sculpted feet so you do get a pretty decent amount of accessories uh, with this Rex and like I said I had a better time posing the 135 I did get some decent poses uh, of the 118 but such a heavy figure those uh, articulated joints on the legs uh, really can't take much you really have to balance and finagle this figure to get a couple of decent poses out of it it's just gonna be really careful the thing is very heavy and if it falls it is probably not gonna break but it's probably gonna break something it lands on and like this is my concern right here these little uh hinges on the forearms if this thing falls i could see them uh easily breaking so be very very careful posing it when it's on your display shelf i would just leave it with the uh, non-articulated legs on it so you don't have to worry about this thing toppling over all right moving on with comparisons first up here it is with the hammond collection alan grant that is a 118 scale figure so it'll go beautifully with this version all right let's keep rolling with these comparisons here it is with safari limited triceratops i think that would go nicely with the 135 scale and here it is with the <laughs> ham collection triceratops that's just way too small yes i know the jp trike is a very small uh version of a triceratops in the movie but seriously this figure is just absolutely ridiculous so it actually looks nice with the 135 scale even though technically it's supposed to be a 118 scale figure and let's just keep the trike train going here it is with pnso's large uh hollow vinyl triceratops uh kind of goes nicely with the 118 scale maybe just a little bit too small and trikes trikes and more trikes here is the beast of the mesozoic uh sub-adult trike or which can also be a 135 scale trike so you can see it's gonna go great uh with the 135 uh t-rex and i think they're just gonna look really really nice on the shelf together and let's move him back he looks a little bit wobbly that is because my uh studio table is just a little bit uh off center so it, it does mess with the stability of some figures on here like see and it's it's not uh it's not the figure it is my uh studio table i definitely have to uh kind of straighten it up just a little bit let's get this guy standing again came on i know you can do it and the last trike i swear here is the adult beast of the mesozoic triceratops you can see what your proper size trike looks next to a proper size t-rex and i think they're going to look absolutely amazing on the shelves together these are just two large figures that are just going to take up an absolute ton of space and they just look fantastic and let's do a few more pieces of Mesozoic Ceratopsians. Let's do the different size classes of those Ceratopsians. Here is the Diablo Ceratops. And next up, here it is 
with the Wendy Ceratops and lastly here it is with the extremely extremely underrated Xeno Ceratops and let's do another 135 scale comparison here it is with the Ancestor models uh, 135 scale Anatosaurus Anekins and you know this really hammers home how large Hadrosaurus could be they were not an easy uh, target for adult Tyrannosaurus like I said these are both 135 scale this Rex would have a hell of a time tackling a healthy individual of this size and now let's move on with Rex comparisons. Here is Safari's uh, feathered T-Rex. And next is the OG, the Papo green stand-in Rex. And let's do the other Papo Rex. Here is the running Rex, which, wow, actually stands. And here is PNSO's Wilson. And here is like the precursor to these figures. Here's the old Rosaurus Carnage Collection T-Rex. These came out, I think, in the mid to late uh, 90s, and they were articulated dinosaur figures. And they really weren't that great. They're kind of limited, but they were really cool at the time. And it's pretty neat if you still have these figures that have it displayed along these you know, more modern, uh, accurate, articulated figures. And let's finish this all up with some big Rex figure comparisons. This is the old Kenner red rex which if you grew up in the 90s was uh probably one of the crown jewels of your dinosaur collection i'm still fortunate i still have my original and it's still in pretty decent shape and next up let's get this off to the side here is a mattel you know mainline t-rex well, i'm watching the tail over here i don't don't want it to destroy my uh masterpiece transformer collection i have right next to the studio i've knocked over some of those figures quite a few times and they cost a lot more than this uh 118 scale rex so here it is with the dominion mainline uh rexy and we all know it's the shut up it's the one comparison everyone wants to see here it is with the hammond collection t-rex and uh yeah you know they're both roughly about the same size uh david's is just a little bit bigger it is a hell of a lot heavier uh i think he weighed them this one weighs three times more than the hammond collection one um hammond collection rex is a great great figure yes it has some exaggerated features like those giant oversized feet um you know these figures right here have proportionate feet and it's 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 standing it's standing so that that tells you something uh it's just two different types of figure for two different types of collectors uh this one is more affordable and if you're a fan of the movie you're going to go get that uh if you are into accurate looking dinosaurs you're going to lean towards this or you can be like me that absolutely despises money and you know you like both you like your movie dinos and you like your scientifically accurate dinos you're going to pick up both and never have any money or room for the rest of your life so final thoughts on these figures um yeah um this review was definitely a workout one of the hardest reviews i've ever had to do on this channel so, uh this review took me like two days to record i just really want to put these figures uh through their paces and just get to know them a lot better uh they're fun uh just the the heft and quality they're definitely worth the price they're huge figures um and they're definitely for the uh especially the big one the 118 is for serious collectors uh the sculpted in detail is beautiful and these are just the gray versions i can't wait to see what the fully painted versions look like when we get those uh sometime in september and it's just they're really great scientifically accurate looking t-rexes and you know for a popular dinosaur there's really not that many to pick from on the market so it's nice to have uh more choices when it comes to accurate t-rex figures um as far as articulation go they're not as flexible uh, and easy to pose as the Ceratopsians, probably because these are bipedal figures, and there's a lot more balancing you need to do when you're playing around with them. The Ceratopsians are obviously quadrupedal. Uh, they're much easier to get into more dynamic poses. Definitely had much more fun posing the 135 versus this big one. The big one just, uh, which just felt kind of cumbersome and like a chore to pose around, and uh, definitely think it could have benefited from some ratchet joints in the articulated legs. Uh, I just think the way the figure is kind of working against it 
and just after a while those joints on those articulated legs are gonna wear out the 135 is fine uh like i said pleasure to pose absolutely loved it uh you could get some poses without the base with the articulated legs on it because it's a much lighter figure uh and the only other thing um just besides like is they're not as flexible as i as i would like them that's just a personal taste uh i just don't like this neck cover right here just uh from, like, from the front and when you're posing it um it just makes it looks like the t-rex is wearing a hoodie i just wish it was just reduced a little bit so it wouldn't be uh so you know obtrusive and just really when you pose it just keeps drawing your eyes to the gaps it forms when you're moving the head from side to side but other than that they're great figures and i'm really really excited for this series obviously because i pre-ordered everything except for like just like two figures so I'm, like, I'm pretty much all in and i'm probably gonna be buying some of those uh fan choice uh ceratopsian figures too just love giving uh be some mesozoic my money because you know i believe in their products and obviously i'm a huge huge fan of them so that will do it for the review. I am really curious how long this review is going to end up being when I edit everything back together. This might end up being one of my longest reviews uh, ever on the channel. I think the, the longest one currently is the freaking Papospinosaurus, uh, the, the, the new one, not the JP3 one. So yeah, so that will do it for the review. Uh, if you stuck with it this long, thanks everybody. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think of these figures and as always if you're enjoying the content on this channel Show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video Each subscription helps out the channel tremendously and is greatly appreciated And I'm gonna go crack myself a beer because these figures freaking wore me out